Hi, I want to call this meeting of the Carpentersville Village Board to order. Oh, you can't, but Chief, would you call the roll? <clears throat> Here. Trustee Thomas. Here. Trustee Rayburn. Here. Trustee Schultz. Here. Trustee Rayburn. Pleasure reading. Here. Uh, we'll <laughs> rise for the Pledge motive. of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation <laughs> from Pastor Ball. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, uh, first of all, with thanksgiving in our hearts and thanking you for an awesome day you've given us to live and to enjoy your great presence. And, and now, God, we ask that you would lead us and guide us in this uh, trustee meeting. You would guide and direct our hearts and minds that would, uh, Lord, just be obedient to you. And Father, we just pray that you would continue to bless our village, uh, continue to bless all our endeavors and everything we work hard for and guide us and lead us. And Lord, just give us the, the grace, Lord God, to build uh, this village for you. And Father, we just thank you for your blessings and all these things we ask in your name. Amen. Okay, we have no appointments, confirmations, or administrations of oath. We have no proclamations, congratulatory resolutions, or awards. I'm going to assume we have no public comments since there's no public here tonight. That's the first been a long time since we haven't had a person at a regular board meeting. I know some of the extra meetings like the budget, there's sometimes not anyone here, but unusual today. Anyway, consent agenda. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There'll be no such, no separate discussion of those items unless the trustee so requests, which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Any items to be removed? No motion to pass the consent agenda. Second. Motion Paul, second Ginger. Please call the roll. Trustee Stevens. Yes. Trustee Humphrey. Yes. Trustee Thomas. Yes. Trustee Rayburn. Yes. Trustee Schultz. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Under old business, we have none. Under new business, a resolution determining the estimated amount of money to be raised through. Oh, we're going to do CRP. Oh, yeah. Guess we should do that. Oh. oh, I was hidden down there at the bottom of the page. Thank you. Uh, all right, we'll do reports of manager, officers, commissions, and staff. Mark? Uh, first time, I'd rec recognize uh, Ed Sidlowski here to <clears throat> give us an update and speak on behalf of the infrastructure projects that have been completed and kind of do a overview of the CIP for next year as well. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Hello, good evening. As uh, Manager Winnie stated, um, he asked me to put together a little list of uh, the construction projects that we've wrapped up since uh, we discussed it at the, uh, at the Finance Committee. And then uh, also go into uh, the first things you're going to see in the uh, beginning of the next fiscal year. Uh, the first project that we've wrapped up is Williams Road Culverts. Um, it was opened last week. Um, they just completed the restoration and the asphalt uh, surface. Um, light poles are early December. The foundations are in. All the cables are on. It's just we're waiting for the poles to come in as a fixture. And then the remaining trees and the uh, staining of the head wall will be in the spring. So really this project is substantially complete. Those two items are completed in the, in the spring. Um, pavement marking, I'm hoping uh, later this week. That's just uh, a couple stop bars, a crosswalk, and some parking spots. And essentially that's done for the year. Uh, Ball Avenue, as you've all seen, that's open quite a few cars on it, that's good to see. Uh, that was open a few weeks ago. Um, trees are planted, but Manager Rooney requested that some additional trees be planted on the uh, south side. So later this week, nine more trees will be planted on the right away on the south side of Fall Avenue. And same thing with the light poles, early December for that with the lighting. Um, several maintenance improvement projects were completed in Old Town. Um, we did the in-house um, plans and specs for the uh, apron replacement. We did about 125 aprons, getting uh, gravel driveways in compliance uh, for code, and then also replacing any hard surface failed driveway aprons as well. And then uh, Public Works, I know we'll touch base on their <coughs> projects, but also tree trimming and the in-house resurfacing was completed in various sections of Old Town. Um, 
After the fiscal year's of, uh, budget's approved in 17, staff's gonna be working on a few uh, engineering agreements to get negotiated. Um, they'll study and or design for the Bulls Road improvements, so the reconstruction of that project. Uh, Hopi Lane storm sewer improvements, and then the uh, Old Town Roadway and utility study. <coughs> That's the phase one study to look at costs, analysis, staging, things like that for the Old Town area. And then uh, staff will be doing the in-house design and documents and surveying for various projects such as uh, east side and west side resurfacing, the Miller Road resurfacing, and then Commerce Parkway resurfacing. Those are the first projects you'll see coming to you after the uh, first of the year. And then, Ed, if you would just touch on the Route 31 and Huntley and the timing of those projects, they're not really sure. our control, but. Right, um, Huntley Road is moving along good. I know Kevin, I think you just signed the, had the last right away sign, so I think we're good on that. West Dundee might be a little bit behind, but they anticipate getting theirs wrapped up by uh, um, submittal. I think we're looking at uh, December. We need about two months to clear the right of way with IDOT, so they're looking for maybe a March letting best case scenario, um, which means uh, you know spring construction or early summer construction for Huntley Road. So that's and that's from right Elm. That's from Elm, including the intersection of Elm and Elm, all the way to just east of um, Sleepy Hollow. And then our project, uh, Huntley 31, which includes um, Maine and Lincoln, we're having some right-of-way issues, as, as the board's aware. Um, those right-of-way issues are being uh, handled by IDOT because they're IDOT's parcels. Um, they, uh, the right-of-way consultants identified four or five, but really it's more like two. Um, and uh, those are probably gonna go into condemnation. It'll take a little longer. Um, so maybe late summer, um, they get that cleared and we can off the bid. <coughs> but, uh, to complete the Huntley Road project. What's about 18 start? months. How much? About 18 months. Just the intersection bridge? Or so that's the Huntley Road project. Part call. of that is that they're not shutting the whole road down. Correct. They're going to stage it, so they're going to shift traffic on one oh, side to okay. the other side. To yeah, get but they're going to have to significantly widen it, so. Yeah. Sorry? They're going to significantly widen Huntley Correct. Road. Correct. I mean, that's going to take time. Yeah. So you got to build actually. Trees. So those roads got to be widened, so there's a lot of construction there stage the traffic, flip it over. So there's a lot to it. A lot of storm sewer, utility, and stuff. And that 18 months isn't full-blown construction. I mean, there's utility work, and then there's uh, restoration and things like that, so. I have a question, Ed, too. Oh, go ahead. Um, Ed, have you, when you were talking about uh, Commerce Parkway and that, any contact with the uh, county as far as uh, the putting in that turning lane over by Miller off of 31? I actually saw some surveyors out there one day and I was hoping that maybe that's what they were trying to do. Yeah, IDOT's working on. Um, no, was it IDOT? I'm sorry, I thought it was a county. Okay. Uh, turn lane on 31 northbound onto westbound Miller Road. Mm -hmm. Nothing on Miller Road though. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Do you think it's going to go through or I mean? Um, I, I know they're, it's, it's line <coughs> gone and um, oh. I think it, we're clearing the right of way. I think that's actually done. Mm -hmm. um, I would Maybe next year? Next June 17, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I believe that's a park district project, and they're working with IDOT to n put a light there as well. Where that's part of, that's one of their options they're looking at, I think. I don't know if that's finalized. <coughs> okay. Getting the intersection to somewhere, uh, whether it's Miller or another. Mm -hmm. But they're definitely doing the turn lane and widening it there. Yeah, that'll be great. So, pretty busy. Thanks, Ed. Sure. Then you want to turn it over to Director Cole? Yes. All yours, Bob. Thank you, Ed. Thanks. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Manager Rooney asked me to just provide some uh, comments on some of our accomplishments um, in public works for last year. I did hand out a, uh, a uh, I provide a, a handout for you, and you can follow along if you'd like. Um, but I would just like to just uh, the top page indicates all of the streets that Public Works has paved in the last 12 years. And uh, I think it's kind of funny, this following year, 2017, we're going to start to cycle all over. Many of the streets that we're going to target <coughs> one of the, are the first streets that we uh, had done back <laughs> 11, 12 years ago, however many it's been. So uh, it's been a good run. 
I that was Denver, Bob. Yeah, that was Denver, <laughs> Denver and Topeka. Yeah. And um, hopefully this round, the suites will last a little bit longer. Back then we had equipment that was pretty inferior uh, compared to what we're using now, so we can possibly get a little bit longer, uh, longer life out of our roads. Uh, 2016, we paved uh, <coughs> about 14 streets within the Old Town District, uh, totaling about three lane miles, and all the streets within Old Town have been completed in the last two, two, two and a half years. And to date, uh, our public works staff has uh, paved, grind, ground and overlaid about 57 lane miles of street, which represents about 29% of the village. So I still feel that that program has been pretty, uh, pretty rewarding and pretty, uh, pretty good for the village. Um, moving on to trees, uh, about uh, two or three years ago, maybe four years ago, we had 2,400 ash trees that were dying or dead that needed to be removed. To date, 2,190 of those trees have been removed. Uh, and when I speak of removing, I also am referring to the stumps have been ground out as well. And uh, we have replaced almost 1,800 trees. I think that's phenomenal. And those trees have been replaced not only from village funds, but also through the cost share program where residents, they contribute to that. And uh, as well as homeowners associations, they played a major part in that tree replacement also. Uh, contracts within the street division, cul-de-sac uh, snow plowing, we entered into a contract for that. And that's really a quality of life issue for many of our residents who live on cul-de-sacs. Uh, typically cul-de-sacs are the last things that are plowed where now they're one of the first streets that are plowed. Uh, crack sealing, street striping. And, and the key too is our trucks in public works are designed, they're large. They're large trucks, yeah. And they push snow a little further than the average cul-de-sac homeowner would ever want to see up in their driveways. And so it is mm -hmm. more efficient and cost effective yep. and satisfaction for our, the citizens yep. to do what Bob's been doing here. Yeah, we, uh, we get very few complaints now from our cul-de-sacs, and so that has been a, a very good program for us. Uh, as I mentioned, crack sealing, which extends the life of our pavement. Street striping, that's an annual uh, thing to get, uh, an annual program that we have. Ground maintenance, which includes all the maintenance of all the village-owned properties, right-of-ways, and uh, sewer and water facilities, and tree trimming and installation. Moving to public buildings, the installation of an aging cooling tower, and the replacement of temperature uh, piping within the basement. That was kind of an emergency portion of the project, but that was completed. And uh, we also completed our second year of caulking all the windows within the village. We split that up into two years because of the cost. Um, we just couldn't bear the cost within one year. And Eric, our public, our, our public building superintendent, he did oversee the construction of the uh, overhead doors at, at uh, Fire Station 1. In our Parks Department, our $400,000 Oslog grant was reinstated. Construction to that park is, uh, is underway. Uh, we are getting a lot of comments from residents asking what's going on. And, um, you know, it's just part of the construction process. I know it looks uh, ripped up. Well, it is ripped up. Uh, but by the end of next, uh, end of do next spring, I'm sure that the park will be back in, in, uh, in good shape. <coughs> um, Public Works, we did go in and we installed two fire hydrants in the park. Uh, we did this on our own in anticipation for all the restoration that's going to be uh, needed in there. We want to keep all that uh, grass and sod and all the vegetation planted, um, watered, so it'll all survive. Um, we also use asphalt grindings within Keith Andrews Park to install a, a, a path that leads from the Sacramento Drive entrance all the way down to the bottom of the ravine. And we have been working with Upland Design to, um, to design a, a enhanced entrance off of Sacramento uh, into the park, which will include an archway sign, Keith Andres Park, a kiosk, as well as a, uh, <coughs> a seating bench, and a column that'll, uh, that'll uh, be dedicated to Keith Andres. And um, that'll be real nice for that. Water facilities, we completed a $400,000 uh, project, which was a replacement of an aeration tower. Uh, we completed our meter installation program, uh, we installed over an eight year period uh, about 10,500 water meters. <coughs> originally that program was supposed to be about five years, but it was extended to eight because of loss of personnel. And I always like to comment on, on our fluoride, uh, fluoridation award. We did receive our 30th fluoridation award this year for monitoring and maintaining the proper fluoride levels within our drinking water. Um, sometimes I think that can be kind of controversial, but 
it is the law and uh, we are one of the, uh, the top um, community water supplies in the state to, to do that on such a consecutive basis. Um, contracts were awarded this year within the water facilities for the inspection and repair of two high service or high capacity pumps. These are 4,500 gallons a minute and they pump uh, raw, um, uh, not raw, uh, treated, not treated, uh, regenerated water um, from the plant to a, a waste holding tank. And we also went under contract for the purchase of water softening salt. And you are also going to approve that contract tonight for water softening salt for 2017. Very good. In wastewater, um, we, we uh, put the two new centrifuges online. And uh, as promised, we are experiencing a 31% decrease in the volume of sludge that we are producing, which the less sludge that we produce, the less disposal cost that we have. So we can expect that that will go down. Matter of fact, I think this year we budgeted $95,000 for um, sludge disposal compared to $120,000 in, in years past. And we uh, continue to work with an engineering consultant for a, uh, a chemical feed addition for phosphorus control. Um, that system is being designed and should be constructed this year. Underground Utilities um, Division, as always, we are, we are out replacing fire hydrants and valves. This year we put, replaced 15 fire hydrants, 17 valves. Uh, we continued our sewer lining um, uh, program, and to date we have um, lined 63,000, almost 64,000 feet of sewer main. And I gave you an example of what that finished project looks like, or fi uh, finished product looks like when I did my <coughs> presentation. That represents about 12.1 miles of the system. And uh, contracts and underground utilities, valve exercising and leak detection. Uh, this round of leak detection, uh, we haven't found a lot of major leaks on water mains or services, but there have been uh, quite a few hydrant leaks. And our staff has gone out and taken care of almost uh, all of those. And uh, that's about it. Any questions? Deputy Cooper, it's just a little aside while you're up there, Bob. Are we okay for upcoming winter for salt? I know we had a couple of mild winters and, <coughs> you know, any issues with uh, getting okay. salt or? All of our salt facilities are full. Yeah, okay. And I believe uh, oh, a couple of meetings ago, the board did approve a contract yeah. through the state uh, of Illinois mm -hmm. Joint Purchase Program for salt. Yeah. We did cut down the quantity down to 2,900 um, ton this year mm -hmm. because we have so much in storage. Yeah. So even if we had a surprise system. attack, we'd we, be in we good shape? Be fine. Okay. We should be fine. Okay. Thanks, and the, Bob. And the system was caught up with the supply finally. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Sixty-eight eighty-three per ton, which is the same price that we paid last year. Yeah. Which is down from ninety hundred dollar, hundred and ten a ton. Yeah, hundred and ten, hundred and twelve bucks. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two or three yeah. years ago. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Did our water softener costs go up? No, uh, they went up. About three percent. Three percent. Okay. But then it looked like our sludge held for a year, right? Yeah, sludge yeah. went down. Sludge yeah. Held so. Yeah, so that's good. All balance is yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, one more thing. Bob, this is probably the best uh, our water system and sewage system <coughs> is shape it's been in, as I can remember, being on this board. Yeah, well, you I know. I mean, we've gotten all of our major projects completed, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, and, and we have to contribute a lot of that to the, to the rate study that was done five years ago. They set out a pretty <coughs> aggressive uh, five-year CIP. And I've tried to follow that to a T, which included a lot of the, a lot of the improvements, a lot of repairs, and um, that really helped out quite a bit. But yeah, the water system, I'm, I'm really happy with it, um, especially with the addition of the 16-inch water main going down Maple and then making the final connection on Beesinger Drive. I think that we've positioned ourselves for many years to come as far as getting water out to the west. Mm -hmm. And I think we're in really good shape. It's yeah. unbelievable the amount of water that we can push across the Lake Huron River. It is. Yeah. It is. But it's nice. I mean, it's, we followed the plan, like you said, and followed the plan. Yep. It's worked out. That aeration tower that was pretty, pretty bad at one, at one time. Yeah, we were having a hard time pushing water through it. Yeah. But uh, well, it's nice to see that fixed and see the centrifuges in place. And, mm -hmm. um, good to hear. And you're you're changing your vernacular. You used to call it cake. Now you're calling it sludge. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. So <laughs> it sounds sugary with, with cake, but yeah, I, thought I'd I guess uh, you're. I guess you're more accurate though than <laughs> using sludge. <laughs> sludge before you wa dewater it, and it's cake afterwards. Oh. Right? That's what we call it. Yeah. That's what we call it. Any other questions? 
Oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Good Thanks, job. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. And that would conclude the staff reports for this evening, President Ritter. Okay. Then we would get on to uh, commissions. Uh, Pat, anything to report? Well, just that uh, last meeting, I was uh, done about now, so just that I'd let you know. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, teasing. Um, I, our, we have a special Excuse events me. committee meeting tomorrow <coughs> night um, at uh, Public Works at 6.30, and uh, we're going to uh, start our uh, cr um, holiday decorating contest. So believe it or not, it's here. So I think, is the form up uh, yet, Bob, on the website? Not yet, it's over to the committee. Okay. Okay, and then <coughs> it'll be up, and we'll be, uh, before we know it, we'll be announcing those winners, and Christmas will be over, you know, flies by. But, uh, but I'm happy that we're able to host another year of it. So hope we get some great participation, and should be fun. So, and that would conclude my report. Thank you. Come. Uh, nothing new on the audit and finance front. We've had our meetings for the budget, and uh, we've made our recommendations to the board. We had our, uh, our uh, mandatory budget meeting last week. Uh, held that and didn't have any public comments, uh, but I've seen a couple of uh, newspaper articles come out about the details of the budget. So if you, you know, if you're, uh, if you have an opportunity, go online. You could get some information there. But uh, a flat uh, corporate levy, uh, pension increases, and debt service decrease equals what about a 1.28? Is that what it was? 1.28 uh, overall increase <coughs> in the in the uh, levy. Uh, however, our rate is going down, uh, I'd say, substantially uh, as a result of that flat uh, uh, corporate rate. So uh, it's good news all around. And the uh, growth of the EAV. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course, and the growth of EAV finally after years and years of EAV decline. How many hundreds of millions of dollars did we lose? 700 million? About almost uh, 375 right around there, almost 400 million. 400 yeah. million, yeah. We were up to dollars. seven, almost three quarters of a billion at one time. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that residents lost collectively uh, in the value of their, their homes, and uh, this year we finally saw a rebound in that. So so that's good, uh, good news for the residents, and it's also good news that uh, the village board here as a whole did not uh, try to take advantage of that fact and raise property taxes. So good news. Uh, good points, Kevin. Uh, there was a nice article in the paper about the Business Development Commission and uh, their focus on the riverfront. Um, we're not going to have a meeting next week. Uh, I know we're looking at uh, future meetings uh, between now and the end of the year, uh, but uh, we're going to hold off with the holiday being next week and take a week off, take this month off. I'm not here to make his report, so I guess that would conclude our uh, reports. Oh, okay, now how about no old business and new business? Uh, resolution determining the estimated amount of money to be raised through ad valorem property taxes for year 2016. I'll motion to pass it. I'll second. Motion, Paul, mm -hmm. second. Kevin, uh, Mark? I want to recognize Katrina, our assistant finance director, Katrina Hanna. If you'd come <laughs> up and just give us the Quick overview, I think it's, <coughs> you can do it in short order. She's, we've been through it a few times. We've been through this a number of times, but folks at home that haven't, you explain it one more time. But she hasn't been up in front like this, and that's, it'll be fine. It's. <laughs> Good evening. Um, Betsy Rayberg has already gone over most of the information to report for the property tax levy. Um, I did want to see that we have a modest increase over 2015, um, $166,341. And our total levy that we're requesting is $13,206,288. Um, and you know we're very proud of the fact that we're keeping the corporate levy flat. This is the first time since I've been here, and it's probably the first time in a very long time. Over a decade. Mm -hmm. So if there's any questions? No questions, thank you. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. I would just comment that the, pro the uh, corporate tax levy has not gone up that much. I think mm -hmm. the entire time you've been here, <coughs> less than 5%. Yeah. Yeah. It's been the debt service and fire and police pensions. Which by law we have to levy for. So, um, right. <clears throat> you know, but we find other places to fill in those gaps. Take away some of that, uh, or make up for some <coughs> of that money that we needed for.
for our various infrastructure projects. Any further questions or comments on the resolution? If not, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Okay. That would take us up to trustee reports. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ginger this evening. Um, I just have one item, and I attended the um, CMS Career Night um, last week. I kind of it was a last minute uh, request, and. I put through a request to everybody here, can you get me some giveaways? And they came up with this There's nice little yeah. package, about a shoebox size, full of badges and uh, pens and pencils and magnets, um, rulers. And so I was at CMS <coughs> to, um, my, to explain what a trustee is. And it was so funny to have the kids come up and and look at my sign and go, what is a trustee? <laughs> and so, um, I, and, and one of my items that I took was the 2016 budget, you know, the, the three ring binder. I did have some kids kind of page through it, had a couple of kids that were really interested and, you know, after explaining, you know, how it kind of all works and, you know, money set aside for this and that. And, um, one, one young, um, guy I said um, so when your parents pay their taxes and the kid went he just gave me this look like that was a nasty thing taxes were nasty and, and so I explained to him what we did with that money and uh, by the time I finished he was he was so relaxed he's like oh okay so you know it kind of took him from a negative um, attitude to a positive attitude. So hopefully he went home and told his parents it was a good thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, uh, and there was a um, Trusty Burroway's wife was there. She works for Delta, so she was uh, there with her little um, wings. And uh, Pastor uh, Adam Partridge was yeah. there. He mm -hmm. sat next to me, and Kay Teeter was there with her Mary Kay stuff. So. Um, it was, it was an eventful evening. <coughs> and the kids had to go around and ask questions of all of the um, people that were working. There was a baker, there was a home caregiver, um, there was a, a, a fireman there. And so they had to ask several questions and then after um, a certain period of time, then we had to sign their little paper and then they could go to the next person and start asking. So at the end, they, they were up for a drawing of some sort, I don't know. I was still talking to a kid when, when they were announcing the prizes. So, um, so it, was, it was a great experience and, and I think the kids had a lot of um, positive energy about maybe what their future, um, we'll see how many trustees show up, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 20 years from now. And that'll conclude the report. No report tonight. Um, I don't really have anything tonight other than I think we should formally recognize Mark Huber's excellent mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a Movember thing? Uh, it's just a Movember thing, yeah. All right. Well, I like it. I, th I think we should get it on video for the village to see. It's going to be a future gray hair facial model. I yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have tonight. The Grecian formula. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no report for me other than happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I, I wish everyone a, a good holiday. Uh, I think we have a lot to be thankful for. I, I know the board has said it many times, but the cooperation between this staff and the board, I think, has just been phenomenal these past few years. The wonderful budget season again. Just nothing like the throws we've been through. Um, it's so great to see projects done in the village get them done and it's funny Bob you know we're starting where we started before it's kind of funny when you think about it time really flies huh Paul so I but it's just uh, all of us working together um, for the uh, sake of the village I think it's really wonderful and something we should all be proud of to be honest with you so for that I'm very thankful I do have a quick question if I could not to put anybody on the spot maybe Kevin knows or Bob how uh, there, there 
there is a lot of trucks taking some, I think that old stone building off of Williams Road down. <coughs> Do you guys know anything about that? Maybe that's not uh, our property. It's not far down. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think that's the Forest Preserve. Something. Oh, that's the Forest yeah. Preserve. Okay, so they, they were taking that down, huh? Yeah. So that thing was like an icon forever, but crumbling, you know, so. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, really? Has it been there? Yeah, it just looked like it was. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't, because those boundaries are so um, odd on Williams, you know, who takes care of what, so I wasn't sure, so. But that, that would conclude my report then, Ed. Thank you. Um, just a couple of things. I attended the Boys and Girls Club fundraiser uh, two Saturdays ago. There were over 400 people there. It's the largest attendance they've ever had at the fundraiser. And they had a lot of big ticket bids on items, you know, far in excess of what the items were worth. So uh, it was a very positive night. Boys and Girls Club had a, a singing group that meets on a regular basis, it's like the Boys and Girls Club choir, and they came and sang. Really nice group. It, it just, it's just wonderful to see the way the community comes out to support the Boys and Girls Club because it's such a worthwhile thing for the, the village. In fact, this tomorrow the, the Carpentersville Rotary will distribute 300 coats to kids in the Boys and Girls Club who might not have a winter coat based on the school district helps us out. And then Rotary also gives about 50 coats to the school district for kids that are homeless. And so we, we have, they have enough on supply that if somebody comes in and moves into the district who is actually homeless, they can kind of outfit them at least with a coat and some basic supplies uh, to get through the start of their career at District 300. And the other thing, uh, you know, we, we have noted that there have been several articles in the paper about our budget. And I wanted to say I really appreciate the two newspapers, the Herald and the courier and the accuracy of the reporting. We've had years where things weren't always what we intended. Yeah, the reports weren't accurate. They weren't wrong, but they were just inaccurate. But the reporting this last year has been exceptional. And I want to thank our uh, correspondents from those two newspapers for doing a really good job of representing Carpentersville accurately. And I don't want to say that they were always positive or anything, but they were accurate. And it's been a, a really nice thing over the last few, last year at least, and probably longer. And with that, I'll conclude my remarks. And we're ready to have a closed session. And we have items 2C1 and 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. I'd need a motion to adjourn to executive session. Motion to adjourn session. to closed, closed session. session. Uh, okay. Closed session, excuse me. Ginger, and I didn't hear a second. Yes, I'll second. second. Oh, Kevin second. Paul second. Um, <laughs> call the roll, please. Yes. 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 And we will uh, adjourn and reconvene later for other village business. <laughs>